Hey, what's up guys? Henry here, and today I just wanted to give you guys some pointers on AWS Amplify for iOS. I've seen on a lot of comment boards that people are having trouble getting their nested uh, models inside of models that they query for. So for example, if they've got a post here, um, they're trying to, qu they query for their post, but then they do post.comments right here, and they can't seem to find their comments because even though there are comments and they do exist in their DynamoDB backend, um, they can't seem to find it, and they have no idea why. So the problem with that is um, when you do post.comments, so if, if someone tries to print, someone gets their post from their DynamoDB backend and then they print the post.comments, the count is zero and there's nothing there and they have no idea why. And the reason for that is because um, out of the box, AWS Amplify for iOS is not going to query for your nested models. You have to explicitly do that in a custom GraphQL request. And um, I mean, you could, and this is what most people probably do already, they query for their post and they use the post ID to query for the comments as well, as in two API requests. But um, to, be, to have an efficient application, you don't want to do that. You want to put that into one request, and that's kind of what GraphQL is made for. So you can kind of, you know, get your nested models out in one request pretty easily. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, let's set up the thing here that people usually do. They usually do get posts right um, by their ID, and that's your post ID. However, you get that. And you're gonna switch your event, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So people are gonna do that. By people, I mean you might be doing this, but now you're gonna know a much more efficient way to get your content out of DynamoDB using GraphQL. So we have our um, request here. Post. Okay, so this get post right here is kind of a you got um, you guys will probably have a get post thing once you you know generate your schema and I haven't actually generated my schema or anything this is just a random project but um, uh, what you want to do is you are going to want to extend GraphQL requests and I would do this in a separate file but I'm just gonna have this in one file just to show you guys how it works here. So what you're gonna, what you're gonna want to do is you want to extend your GraphQL request, and then you want to make kind of a function of yourself, um, static function like get post for example. So get post might already be taken for you guys, so maybe you want to say get post with comments. So you need to construct a um, custom GraphQL request here. So there's a few things that are in here. Th this is also in the uh, docs, but it's kind of not super well explained, but it's not bad, but it's not super well explained either. So I'm trying to just making this video to help you guys here. So basically here's the function that you want and we're gonna return the GraphQL request and then the model right here that uh, you want to query for. It doesn't necessarily have to be post. If you, if you have a user model, just put user in there and then it'll change accordingly, right? So there's two things that we have right here. And right now it's one, an operation name, and two, the document. And then we're returning a GraphQL request right here with these, um, these kind of variables that we're putting in. Uh, we don't need this variables thing, but it's there if you want to kind of utilize the query, uh, get post, like this ID stuff. You, you can do that, but you don't really need that there. So there's variables. I just wanted to show you guys, but that is not necessary. Um, so we're just gonna have the document. So that's what we're gonna put into this kind of function here. And then we're gonna have the response type, which is also going to be the same thing as what we're turning, which is post. So if you have this as user, you want this to be user too, and this thing right here as well. But we're um, getting a post right now. Post.self, and then the decode path, is gonna be the operation name. Now the operation name is what you're actually gonna find in your app sync console. You can also have you can also have no decode path right here and then have this as a JSON value um, like that and also have these as JSON value and at that point you can kind of custom you can you know uh, what's returned here 
um, what this post is going to be and, and whatever request you get is going to be that JSON value. But that's not what we're doing today. We're going to be doing a response type of post with a decode path. And that decode path is usually going to be get in lowercase and then your model name. And that's what's kind of auto-generated if you generate your schema using GraphQL, using AW, um, Amplify like code gen models. That's what you're usually gonna get. So uh, if, you, if you literally made a um, model called post, your decode path is gonna be get post. But to find out exactly what your decode path is, what you want to do is you want to navigate, you want to go to your terminal, navigate to your project, and once you're in your project, you're going to do amplify console, uh, console API, or it could be API console, I'm not sure, but amplify console API, and then you're going to uh, select GraphQL, um, it's going to ask you to type GraphQL, press enter, and it's going to take you to the console. And that's where you can kind of play around with your GraphQL queries. And you're also going to find um, the name of your uh, operation is going to be your operation name that you input in here. So if you, if you generate a model and you push it to Amplify, uh, if you push it to the cloud, um, there's going to be an operation called get post right there. And then at that point, uh, you can construct your own queries inside that API console that you navigated to using your terminal and just post the document that you want in straight in here. Um, we can also type it out, which is what I'm going to do, but um, you can actually just paste it, copy and paste it straight from your kind of app sync GraphQL builder over there. So what we're going to do here is usually it's going to look something like this. Um, ID, and then what do we want from our post? And maybe we're going to want, I don't know, we're, our ID, what do we have here? Content and comments. So with the comments thing, so this is this is kind of the generic uh, AWS Amplify for iOS query that you're going to get when you usually do get post, like right there. Um, but now we have get post with comments. So I'm going to paste that in there, and that should work. There we go. We have get post with comments, and then we're also taking in an ID, which is one. So what we're going to do is, this is hard-coded right now, what you want to do is you just want to do some interpolation there and then throw your ID in there like that. And um, your your query might be different. All you have to do is go to your Amplify console API, go to the cloud, and then check out what your queries are and post the documents in here. And then whatever variables you have, just do some string interpolation and then you're, you're going to be able to get your document out there. So this is literally the query that you're giving to um, uh, the cloud, basically. Uh, so comments might be, I don't know, limit 10 like that. So this is the nested part of it. So if we don't include the comments like that and we execute this query, the cloud is going to return a post right here, the response type. It's going to give us a post. So right here, um, post, this post that it returns right here, we're going to have their, we're going to have the ID in there because we, we asked for the ID. Right, so that is going to not be nil as long as it's not nil in the DynamoDB table, um, and then we also ask for the content, so that's not going to be nil either. That ID equals content equals. But let's say we remove content and we just ask for the ID. We still we're returning a post because that's the response type, and that is okay because um because content is not required right there, right? It's optional. So we don't necessarily need a content. So since we didn't ask for content, but we're still decoding it into post, if we print out content right here, content is going to be nil. There's not going to be content in there because we didn't, we never asked for it. And the app has no idea what the content is because we never asked for it. Um, but the ID will not be nil because we did ask for that. Now keep in mind, ID is not optional. So if we just ask for content and we try to decode it into post, it won't be able to decode it into a post model. So actually, um, this thing will kind of return an error right here, a successful GraphQL error. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to say something like, you can't decode that or something. And that's because we didn't ask for the ID, which is what, it's not optional. So we do need it. So um, with this particular query, our comments, 
right here, post.comments. Our comments are still going to be nil because we never asked for comments here. So if we print comments, it's still going to be nil. Maybe comments.count, it's still going to be zero because we don't have any comments that we asked for. So all we have to do is ask for the comments now. So comments limit maybe 10 and then you can play around with like filters and whatever you want. Um, you can do like DynamoDB secondary indexes and then you're gonna be able to, you know, sort your comments out. Um, I don't recommend just uh, listing out all your comments because you, you're probably gonna have to think of a secondary index, which I can do in another video if you guys want. But um, for now we can just do like a limit and do ID and then our other thing was content. So we also have a content in comments. So now, now this is starting to look like something. We've got a get post. So we're getting our post, we're getting the post ID, we're getting the post content. Then we're also got, we're now finally getting the con, con, the post comments, which is, we're explicitly requesting for that. Um, now remember the amplify out of the box doesn't do this because that's gonna, we have to, you know, explicitly ask for it. This is what Amplify out of the box would usually do, but now we're doing a custom GraphQL request where we're asking for the comments as well. So now, as long as we have 10 comments in our DynamoDB table, if we print this out, this is gonna be comments.count, it's gonna be 10, guys, it's gonna be 10. And now you can also kind of uh, play around with your comments. Um, let's do first comment. This might not work. Oh, it does work. Um, yeah, so you do that. Sometimes you have a list. It returns a list of comments, and you'll have to kind of, if you want to get them into an array of comments, you might have to do like elements or comments, compact map, for example. You just do a compact map there, and then that would be a comment array. Array. And then we can also kind of initialize a different array of comments, for example. And if we want to add those comments together, for example, if we're querying for more comments than we had before, we can do comment real array is equal to comment real array plus comment array. And that should work. That should work. There it is. So that is how you execute a custom GraphQL query. Now this is a very simple query. Uh, did not work. Comment real array. What are you talking about? Okay, anyways, there we go. <laughs> I don't know why that was showing. But um, yeah, so this is a pretty simple query because we only have a few fields in our model. But um, if you have like, you know, post author ID or author. And you can also query for like an author, for example, if you have one author, um, you're gonna be able to query for that. And it's gonna be like this. If your author has an ID, maybe a username, maybe an email. If you had an author in there like that, it would be able to get your author out of there. I don't have an author model, but you, you get the point, right? Um, you just have to explicitly query for it, which is what GraphQL does not do for you out of the box. So um, hope this helped, guys. Hope this answers your question on why you're not getting your comments count, um, why you're not getting comments out of your post. And I hope that you guys are going to be able to execute a single query instead of multiple queries, because that's honestly what I did in the beginning, and I wasn't too sure what I was doing, but. Um, after you know a long time at it, I, I kind of know I kind of know my way around now, and um, yeah, this is how you do it. Let me know if you have any questions, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Hey, hey, make sure to hit subscribe, like this video, and comment your questions. Thank you.